What's going on guys? In this video, we're gonna be reviewing Google Finance, the app. Now I know a lot of you have watched my videos about all of these portfolio trackers and we're pulling from Google Finance. You might be wondering, where is this Google Finance that we're even pulling from? Is it just some kind of weird thing in the back of Google? No, it's an actual site that you could go to and then you can look up all of these different stocks. So what I'm gonna do today is walk you through the website. I'm gonna show you the pros and cons of it and then if it's something that I would recommend using. But before that, make sure if you haven't already to jump over and hit subscribe, turn on that bell notification so you know when I drop new videos and smash that like button helps my algorithm a lot. You guys have been rocking with that. All right, so we're gonna jump onto the computer and before we even go to Google Finance, uh, I just wanna let you guys know, Google Finance has had an interesting past. It was a thing, then it wasn't a thing, then it got this makeover. It, you can see right here, you can pull it up on your phone. It does not work for Android. I cannot find this on the Play Store. So we're just gonna be talking about the desktop version. But here's what you're gonna do. You're gonna go to google.com and as long as you have a Gmail account, which is free, obviously, you click on this and if you scroll all the way down, right here where it says finance, click on that and this is Google Finance or the new Google Finance. So it has a very sleek design. In my opinion, it's it has a Robin Hood feel to it. It's very simple, very user friendly. The UI just, it looks nice, but there's pros and cons to that. And we're, we're gonna get into that. So this is the main, your dashboard, I guess you would call it. Uh, you can see right here, we have all of the major indices at the top. We could go from US to Europe, Asia. We could look at currencies. And then we can even look at uh, some top cryptocurrencies, which I think is really cool. We'll go back to US. And if you click on one of these, so let's say we want to look at the NASDAQ, then it pulls up the NASDAQ. It's a very simple interface. There's no candlestick charts. You could go one day, five days, a month, six months, year to date, year, five years, and max. Also, if you scroll down, it'll provide you with some key statistics and some news. And I mean, this is a major indice. There's really not that much news going on with it. And that's just because I guess it's only gonna show you the major news. It's not gonna give you every little intricate thing that's happening within the market because they don't wanna overwhelm you with information. But you can see, again, it's very simple. We could see throughout the uh, each day what the price was at. But let's click back on Google Finance to bring us back to the home screen. So if you scroll down, you can see right here, top movers on your watch list. So you could create watch list, which is right here. So let me just click on this. You can see here's all the stocks that are on my watch list. And if you guys have seen any of my other videos, these are all the stocks that I'm invested in. Friday was a pretty bad day. A lot of stocks were down. I did have one stock in the green, but let's jump back to the home screen. How do you create a new watch list? It's right here. You click on that, you name the watch list. So we'll just name this about watch list 2.0. Hit done and it brings you right to it. Add investments, you click on that. So how about we want, we'll just add the big ones, Apple. So there's Apple right there. And then if we wanna add another one, it's right here, this add button. So we click on that. Let's do, how about Microsoft? So there it is. Even if, say you don't know the ticker symbol, if you type in Microsoft, it'll show you, okay, here's the ticker symbol. MSFT on the NASDAQ, let's click on that. Uh, let's add, how about everyone's favorite stock in 2020, Tesla. So right there, we could add that. And how about Target? We could add Target. So I, I could go crazy and I could add as many as possible, but here's just four stocks. Now what's really cool about the watch list, it'll show you, here's your earnings calendar. So I could see when the earnings is coming up for my stocks. And then down here is all the news that's going on for my stocks. And it's pulling from different sites. We got one from CNBC, Fox, The Motley Fool, Simply Wall Street. So it makes it very simple to monitor the stocks that you're investing to see what's happening in the news, to know when your earnings are coming out. And it gives you just a quick glance of what the price is 
and how it's doing for that day. So we're gonna jump back to home again and we're gonna scroll down a little bit. So you can see once you pass the watch list, you then have today's financial news. And this is just what's going on in the market. Again, you're pulling from some major sites like The Motley Fool, Bloomberg. So let's click on one of these. How about here, Asian stocks set for modest gains. So if we click on that, it brings you right to Bloomberg's site. It doesn't keep you on Google Finance. It'll bring you to another site. And then you can just jump right back up at the top to get back to Google Finance. So that's all of the major news. We keep scrolling down. Now we have market trends. And I think this is also pretty cool. You could see the most active stocks, your biggest gainers, your biggest losers, and then whatever stocks are trending right now. So again, this could give you a good pulse on the market. You can know what other people are looking at and what has a lot of volatility in it or which stocks are very liquid. Then if we keep scrolling down, here's the discover more tab. This is great for beginners, and that's because maybe you're just starting to dabble in the market. You really don't know too many stocks to invest in. There may be some companies that you're a loyal customer to, and you don't even realize that it's on the stock market. So this will show right here, discover more. You may be interested in all of these. And you can see it's generated a list based off of the securities that you follow and your recent searches. So we could see, I have Micron Technology, Snap, Wells Fargo, McDonald's. I don't know why McDonald's is up there. Um, but you could see all of these that I might be interested. So maybe this could give you ideas. Maybe you think, oh, let me check on TD. I like TD Bank. Let's see how they're doing, how they're performing. And then it brings you back to what we saw before with the NASDAQ. You have the price chart. Scroll down, you have some key statistics, a uh, little about, and well, I guess now we're jumping into this. You can see financial performance over the past couple of quarters. You could also do it annually, and it shows you five years, which is kind of nice. Seeing a chart for five years, uh, Yahoo Finance will only show you, I think, three or four years. So this is giving you that extra year. The only other site that I know that has it laid out nicely like this would be seeking alpha. The free version gives you five years. The premium version gives you 10 years. But if you're just starting out, five years is really all you need, in my opinion, before you start diving into some serious fundamental analysis. But you could see right here, everything's laid out very nicely. This is 2020. If I scroll, if you scroll over to either of the bars, it's not gonna show you the exact price. It's one thing that Yahoo Finance does that I like. But what's really nice is I could see each year. So if I click through 2016, 17, 18, 19, or 20, I could see the performance of the year. I could see what the revenue was, the net income, and it's color-coded. Okay, so green is revenue, yellow is net income. So again, it's, it's very simplified site. It's a very minimalist site. It's just giving you the really important information. Uh, let's keep scrolling down. You're back to the discover more. So that's pretty much what a stock will look like. Um, and the analysis or the data that it gives you, there is a little about section from Wikipedia. It looks like it's pulling from, uh, we could click on Wikipedia and I'll bring it to that. It shows you the CEO when it was founded where the headquarters is, the website, and the total amount of employees. So we're almost done walking through this site. We're gonna scroll right here. Here's the last section, and this is most followed on Google. So this is just people also using Google Finance and what they are following. So you can see it's no surprise what the top followed stocks are. And look at that, I typed in four of the six that are top followed. Uh, I would probably follow Facebook because I invest in Facebook. Amazon is a great company. I don't invest in it. Uh, that's because I think there's better companies to invest in like Etsy and Shopify. But that's my opinion. Uh, but this is Google Finance. Let's just jump over to crypto, see what that looks like really quick. So you can see, what do we have here? We have the price chart, key statistics, previous close, about Bitcoin kind of gives you a little description from Wikipedia and it gives you the US dollar for whatever reason. 
and some news. Uh, it doesn't even look like it shows how many coins are. Oh, I guess right there, 12, I guess 12 million coins in circulation. But it, it's very, you know, there's, you're not getting much information for Bitcoin other than where the price is at and the news for Bitcoin. So we'll go back to the home screen. This is Google Finance. Now let's dive into my thoughts on the application. So first off, their UI is very nice. It's very simplistic, just like Robinhood. So if you're a beginner and you want to start looking into stocks, I would highly recommend this. I'd say it's a great place to start, get your feet wet, start to look at different stocks, maybe create a watch list that you could see each day so you know how the market reacts throughout time. And you could just start to expose yourself to different securities. Now, just like Robinhood, one thing I don't like about this is the same reason why I like it. It's simplistic. In my opinion, it's too simplistic. If you want to start getting into some more advanced fundamentals, you want to look at maybe balance sheets or income statements, you can't do that on Google Finance. You can do that other places like Seeking Alpha and Yahoo Finance, but Google Finance doesn't do that. We jump back really quick. Let's let's click on Etsy. You got the price chart, great. You got some key stats and I could see the financial performance, but I can't actually dig in to the financials. I can't look at the income statement. It's not posted here. And I can't look at uh, the balance sheet or the free cash flow statement. If I click on this, let's see where, that doesn't even give me, uh, this just gives me a description. This isn't a hyperlink that I could click on. So that's kind of limiting. I don't like that uh, when I invest in any stocks. I want to know what the free cash flow looks like. I also want to know what the earnings before tax depreciation and amortization looks like. There's a couple of very big key statistics that I want to see that you can see right here isn't included in Google Finance's key statistics. Market cap is great in all year range. I mean, it's funny. This says key statistics, but... This really isn't helping you at all to know if it's a good stock. Uh, the price really doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if it's a $20 stock or a $2,000 stock. I want to see the fundamentals. Day range doesn't matter. That's not going to determine if I'm going to invest in a stock. I don't care what the stock is doing each day. Your year range maybe kind of matters. You could tell if it's at a high or low for the year, but it's still not something too important to me. Market cap, as long as it's over a billion dollars, I'm invested in it. I don't care if it's $5 billion or $500 billion. That doesn't matter to me. The volume really doesn't matter to me. If you're looking at stocks that are over a billion dollars market cap, it's going to be liquid. So you can see there's, it really doesn't give you too much information if you're a more advanced investor or if you're someone that's really digging into the fundamentals of a stock. I would love to know the debt to equity, and they don't have that there either. And now, of course, if you're a day trader, forget it. You, you can't use this. You need to see candlesticks. So if you're more advanced, intermediate, if you're a day trader, if you want to look at the fundamentals, Google Finance, it's nice to maybe check in on your stocks just to see, okay, I wonder how my uh, position's doing, and I don't feel like digging through Yahoo Finance. I just want just something quick to see. Then yeah, Google Finance is great for that. And if you're a beginner, great place to start. You don't want to overwhelm yourself with all of this weird jargon and uh, terminology that you don't know yet. Start simple like this, then learn more, check out more videos on my channel. And meanwhile, you do that, make sure you subscribe and like all of them as well. And you can learn more and then you can jump onto more advanced stuff and actually look through income statements, free cash flow statements and balance sheets. But that's my thoughts on Google Finance. Let me know what you guys think. Did you even know Google Finance was a thing? Did you know how to get to it? Do you use it? Do you plan on using it now? Drop comments below. Guys, as always, I will see you in the next one.